Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem removing stars from a string. We're given a string S that contains some star or wildcard characters. So maybe something like this. I hope you don't mind if I replace this with an N. But they basically tell us that if we see a wildcard character, we have to remove the first character that appears to the left of it that's not a wildcard. So for this, it's pretty simple. We're gonna remove the T. For this wildcard, it would also be this T. But think about it, that T won't exist if there is another wildcard that comes before it. So basically, this description of the problem kind of tells you the answer. If we have a single wildcard like this one, it's always gonna remove the previous character. But when you have multiple consecutive wild cards, that just means we're gonna remove the previous character. So if there's two consecutive wild cards, we remove the two previous characters. This one has no choice but to remove this. This one has no choice then to remove this. So this becomes the solution. So for each wild card, we're always gonna remove a character. Well, I guess the edge case could be that we have a wild card at the beginning and there's no character before that. But other than that, this problem isn't super crazy. That's how simple it is. So knowing all of this, how exactly do we solve it? Well, since we're always gonna be removing the previous character as we like see a new wild card, a stack is a very good choice for this problem, the stack data structure, because we only need to push onto the stack or pop from the stack. So this is how we would solve the problem. Just go character by character. Let's say this is our stack. We see an N, we add the N to the stack. E, E, T, add those to the stack. That's neat. And then we see a wild card. So we pop the previous character from the stack. Pushing and popping is a constant time operation. So this is about as efficient as we can get. So now we see another wild card. We pop again from the stack. Now we see a character. So we add that O, D, add those wild card, pop that. We see an E, push that. So our result is N, E, C, O, E, which is pretty much the result maybe off by one character. But we just went through every single character in the input string, pushing and popping, which are constant time operations. So the overall time complexity is gonna be the size of the input string and our stack in the worst case is also gonna be that size. So that's the memory complexity of this problem as well. So now let's code it up. So I'm gonna code this with a stack. Now, technically you could also just use a string, but usually strings are immutable. So anytime you modify a string, like if you were to add a single character to it or remove the last character, it's actually not a constant time operation. It's usually a big O of N time operation where N is the size or the current size of the string. So what I like to do is have a stack where each value in the stack is just gonna be a single character like this. And then at the end, what we're gonna do is return the stack, but we wanna actually combine all of the strings. And the most efficient way to do that in Python is to just join the strings using an empty string as the delimiter. So doing this will basically combine each of these strings, adding an empty string in between them, which basically just combines all of them. And this will pretty much guarantee that the solution is about as efficient as we can get it. Now for the actual logic, we just go character by character in the input string S. There's only two cases. Either the case is a wild card or it's not a wild card. If it's not a wild card, that's pretty simple. We append to the stack, we append that character. If it is a wild card, we could do this stack dot pop. But what if the stack is empty? That would happen if the input string started with a wild card. So for that, we can add a statement, like make sure the stack is non-empty before we try popping from it. So you could write it like this, but we can actually make this a bit more concise by doing this, just checking is the stack non-empty because the way this is evaluated in Python is if this executes to be false, this won't even be executed at all. If this is true, then this will be executed. So that's just a neat little trick if you care, but now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.